Hi, I'm Seamless, and this is another Sonic Academy Tech Tip. Today we're going to be talking about side chaining, and a way of doing it without using actual literal side chaining. Now, side chaining, the term, what that means is that you take something like a compressor, and you're putting another input into the side, but while you still have the original input coming into the main actual input. So what it's doing now is that the actual compression that's occurring is occurring based on analysis of the side input and then applying that to the main input. We use this typically for ducking, where a kick, for example, would come into the compression section, and then that signal gets used to compress the main signal, which ducks it according to the kick coming in. Now, that's, you know, all well and good. However, these days, I like to actually do my side chaining automatically, uh, just through automation. Automatic automation. Manually. Blah, blah, blah. And there's actually plenty of plugins that do this. Things like LFO Tool, uh, even Grossbeat inside inside FL, a plugin called Volume Shaper. But actual just straight up volume automation is also just fine. Much like Volume Shaper or LFL Tool, you have incredibly direct control over how the curve of what you're going to be doing. And it ha this has nothing to do with an audio signal or something else. In the in the ducking game, when you're using side chaining, you can either use the actual kick signal that we have coming out of you know, the kick drum of the track, or we use a ghost kick where it's a whole other signal that's there to uh, control the signal so that it's not intrinsically linked to the actual audio of the main thing. There's, you know perks and falls, pros and cons, or the, was the word I was trying to say there, to either idea. But doing it with the automation, you don't have to worry about any of that. You could just do it, and it'll work just fine. Um, or using, I, in this example in FL, I'm using this plugin called the Fruity Balance. And this, all that this is, is just a volume knob and a padding knob. Uh, you might think, be thinking, why aren't, why aren't I just automating the fader or any other kind of volume apparatus. And the reason for that is that the fader on the mixer actually has built-in smoothing. There is smoothing on all linked automation, and then by typically it's off. And you can turn it on if you want, and then you can have smoothing so that like the sharp things don't generate clicks if you don't want them to generate clicks. But for something like side chaining, when I tell it to go off, I want it to go off when I tell it to go off, specifically and precisely how I tell it to go off. And with something like the, the fader, if I were to do that with the fader, the automation would look a little bit more like this than what I was just doing. And as well as that works, as far as the expression of side chaining or ducking, um, this is accomplishing something kind of bad for the mixing position of, of it. Because the whole point of it is that we're trying to get the big hit out of the way of the initial transient of the thing that we're ducking it with. So in this case, the kick drum. The initial transient it happens pretty freaking fast. And if we do it like with snares or other things, we really want it to be out of the way immediately so that there's as little competition as possible with the very beginning of that particular sample. Um, other more fun things, like if we're trying to, if we're trying to side chain the base of the base to the kick, then you might want to do something like this because the base itself starts high and then comes low and then eventually will be interacting with it. But... Uh, as far as the whole sample is concerned, you want it to be fast. And if there is a click, you might not have to worry about it just because that's going to be in line with the click of the actual kick itself. So it's, it'll be masked. It'll be fine. Also, cool stuff we could do with the manual automation is that if we if we felt like it, we could engage the side chaining before the hit itself. Which has a very imperceptible impact on what's happening. But... From a mixing sense, this is fantastic, and this is this is something that people like Zomboy do all the time. Where if we are engaged in side chaining before the hit, that means that when the hit itself actually occurs, it guarantees that there's not a single thing uh, interacting with it at all. Which means that that kick drum is going to be the loudest it could possibly be in the mix all the time. Of course, if you're side chaining everything, and that's all super great. So yeah, automation and uh, side chaining go hand in hand quite well. This has been a Tech Tip for Sock Academy, and I'm Seamless R. The R is silent. It's just seamless. Anyway, y'all have a nice day. Bye bye 
thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.